All right, well, I want to share with you guys a story um, from my life. This is back in 2014. Where were you in 2014? I don't know where you were, but uh, I have a picture just for context. This is what I looked like in 2014. This is when I still had hair, sort of, because even when I was, this was forever ago, it feels like, and my hairline is still awful, <laughs> first off. So I was like born with a receded hairline. I'd never had a receding hairline. It was just always receded. God just speed run me on that one. So uh, that's that. But I didn't want to be the only one embarrassed tonight. So this is a photo of Daniel Foreman in 2014. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is my brother right here. If you did not know, this is Daniel. Okay, these embarrassing photos aren't the only embarrassing thing. So this story I want to share with you guys was uh, I was at church at a worship service here at Foothills. So I'm worshiping. And uh, I don't know if you guys ever have days where you're so busy or like the day before. So the night before this, I did not sleep hardly at all, probably for a dumb reason. So I'm tired. I'm at church and it's during worship. And my brain was doing this thing where it's just running somersaults all over the place. I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but where your brain is just like all over the place, jumping from one thing to the next thing. So I'm in worship. Everybody's worshiping. It's a great time of worship. And then I remembered, oh, my friend's coming to church today. And I was supposed to meet him out in the courtyard. So my brain is like switched from I'm in the middle of worship to like, oh, I just got to go get my friend. So um, while I'm worshiping, I'm just, I'm just focused on the Lord, right? Uh, can I, I actually... I want somebody's help. I want to volunteer. Daniel, get up here. Oh, sorry, wrong Daniel. I actually want this Daniel. Man, now I feel bad. Maybe I'll have you help later. Daniel, I'm going to give you this free coffee bar coupon. Daniel, you can have my wallet. I'm just going to. No, Daniel, come back, come back, come back, come back. You do get to keep that. Okay, this is what I need you to do. You're a good actor, right? Sweet. All right. Uh, you can put that in your pocket because you're at church right now worshiping. All right. We're at church. It's Sunday morning. You're worshiping. It's, start worshiping. It's with, you worship with your eyes closed, staring at people. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. That's nice. Okay. So Daniel's a woman, if you didn't know, in this story. <laughs> okay. So congratulations. You're a woman now. All right. So for the sake of the story, Daniel's a woman. I'm worshiping. Okay, and then in this moment, it felt like hours, but my brain just went through these crazy somersaults and is like, oh, my friend's here. I'm in the middle of worship. So I hastily turn around. And no, no, Daniel, you don't turn around. <laughs> here, I need, I need you to focus. Okay, Daniel. Also, you're really into worship. So like, yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Now he's worshiping. This is like... I'm sort of worshiping. This is like, okay, yeah, now we're here. All right, so anyway, uh, I'm worshiping, and I'm like, oh, my friend's here. My friend's out there. I got to go get him. So I turn around quickly, and what do you guys think happens? I wish that's what happened. <laughs> I wish what happened was I ran in. Remember, this is a, a woman behind me, not Daniel. So I turn around hastily, and this is what I do. No, no, go back, go back. No joke, no joke. So I'm sitting here and I'm worshiping and I'm like, oh, my friend's supposed to be here. I turn around and in a moment my brain goes, oh, look, somebody wants to give me a high five. This is some random person who I've never met in my life who's in the middle of worshiping Jesus and then is just like surprise high five, looks at me and I just like, I don't even look back at her. I just walk straight out. I'm like, I don't know who this person is. I'm just like, I'm gone. You can go sit down for now. Thank you. Appreciate it, Daniel. Good acting. I appreciate it. Okay, it's one of the more embarrassing moments in my life. So I, I left. I went and got my friend, went to a completely different part of the sanctuary to go sit down. I was like, I'm not going back over there. Still to this day, I don't know who it was. I didn't even, like, look at them. It was just my brain was like, oh, somebody wants to give you a high five, Matt. This is why it's important to get good sleep. <laughs> which uh, I took for granted when I was younger, and then I had a baby, and now I don't sleep at all anyway. So 
Now, this is what I want to ask you guys. Have you ever been in a situation like that where you felt uncomfortable or embarrassed or like the whole room was looking at you? Because in that moment, I felt like literally every single person in this room is just focused on me. Daniel said he's felt that way because he was literally just up here while everyone's looking at him. Tonight, I want to talk to you guys about being able to put aside our perceptions about what we think the people around us think about what we're doing. And I want to talk about learning to be uncomfortable. If I was going to have a title for my message, it would be Get Uncomfortable. Not so that you can dish out hand f high fives during worship, right? So like everyone's worshiping and you're just like, high five, high five to everybody. No, no, that's not, that's not the point of it. But getting uncomfortable so that we can be properly able to walk out the plans and purposes of God, regardless of how we might feel in a moment. Again, not for the sake of ourselves, not so that you can feel better, but so that the kingdom of God can be advanced within your life. What do I mean by advancing the kingdom of God? Because I think this, this phrase is something that you hear a lot if you're around church, but we might not understand. I want to read you guys some verses. It's in Matthew chapter 28. We have those verses, Matthew chapter 28. Hey, it says this. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This uh, scripture right here is what we call the Great Commission. This is before Jesus ascends up into heaven. This is Jesus giving his final commands to his disciples. The Great Commission, in its simplest form, is Jesus' commandment for us to expand his kingdom through baptism of the Holy Spirit and preaching the gospel. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about this. But notice at the end of Jesus' teaching here, he says, go out into the world teaching the people to observe the commandments which I have also given to you. The reason why that's important is because what Jesus is saying in this sentence right now is a commandment that he's giving to his apostles, but this is not something that he was just telling his apostles to do. He's saying, you guys go do this, and then you go teach other people to do this as well. So this is a commandment for you and I. So this is the question for tonight, and what I really want to focus on. Is the kingdom of God being advanced in your life? Is God's kingdom being progressed in your life? Not in your church, but in your life. This is a uh, heart check moment. I love heart checks because you it causes us to think for a little bit. So I really want you to think about this. Is the kingdom of God being advanced in your life? few things that you can think about. Are people hearing the good news of Jesus through you? Do you tell people about him? Are you helping people walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Do you even know what that means? And how willing are you to go out of your way even to get uncomfortable so that these things can come to pass? I want to look at some of the hindrances that we have because the Bible is very, very clear that all of us are called to preach the gospel to people. I think you guys know this, but it's probably one of the things that we do the worst <laughs> and we struggle with the most is being able to spread the gospel and advance God's kingdom and fulfill this great commission. So I want to look at some of those things. We had a post out on social media today. Um, I sent out some texts to some of you guys as, as well, asking you guys, what are some of the greatest hindrances that you have when it comes to trying to share the gospel with people, trying to tell people about Jesus? 
And we're going to look at some of those things tonight. So what I've done is I've broken this up into three primary reasons why we hesitate or that we might be hindered from being able to share the gospel with somebody. These are the most common excuses that people make. So let's go through them. First one is this. The first hindrance is fear of losing relationship. What does that mean, Matt? It means that we're afraid that people are going to reject us. Not only reject what you say. So let me give you an example. Steve doesn't love Jesus. He does, very much so. But let's say Steve doesn't love Jesus. I walk up to Steve and I'm like, hey, did you know Jesus really loves you and he has uh, good plans for your life and he died on a cross? And Steve is like, you're a weirdo. I hate you. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, now Steve doesn't like me. Now this is, if you went up to some random stranger and did this, first of all, that's a bold thing in the first place. But it's like, oh, it's some random person. But what about with your family members? I've had relatives that um, do not love God and do not walk with the Lord. And when you try and approach them about God, often we're afraid because we're afraid that it's going to hurt our relationship. I know some of you guys, you have friends in your life that you want them to be Christians. You want them to walk with the Lord, but you also don't want to bring it up because you like your friendship. And you don't want them to go, oh, so-and-so is a weirdo. I don't want to hang out with them. Oh, so-and-so likes church and God. Like, well, they're not cool anymore. We fear being judged or mocked, and worst of all, being rejected by people. Now, does this change the fact that we're still called to preach the gospel to those people? No. You guys are welcome to answer those questions sometimes, too. I know everyone's really sleepy today. It's fine. It doesn't change the fact that we're supposed to preach the gospel to people, but often it's a roadblock that we, uh, we don't really get past. So I want to talk about how we overcome that fear, that fear of losing relationships, that fear of losing people. But you're going to have to wait because we're moving on to number two. So number two is this. The second hindrance that I found in my own life and that you guys shared on social media and that you guys sent over to us is lack of biblical knowledge. I'm going to use Steve as another example. Unless, Daniel, you want to be the example this time. Daniel's the example this time. So you can come, come up here, Daniel. Good work. Can we put that photo of Daniel back up there just for a side-by-side? Woo-woo! -side? Well, you didn't get any cuter, that's for sure. I'm just messing. All right, so, Daniel, this is the fear. I want you to approach me like you would approach, uh, let's say, somebody you knew a little bit. So it's like it's a friend, maybe kind of a distant friend or um, somebody of that nature, and you're like, okay, I want to preach the gospel to this person. I want to tell them about Jesus. So approach me. What would you say? I want to tell you about Jesus. <laughs> oh, tell me about him. Uh, Jesus is the son of God, and he died on the cross to save your life so that you could come and be with him in heaven for eternity. So how come Jesus let my four-year-old daughter die from cancer? <laughs> cancer killed your four-year-old daughter, not Jesus. Okay, so <laughs> you can go sit down. So this is, this is my point here. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Anytime my brain is like, okay, I want to go talk to somebody about Jesus, these are the thoughts that go through my head. What if, like, this person has been through some serious hardship in their life, and they start to question me on it? I've had conversations with people that I'm trying to um, lead to Jesus and share the love of Jesus with them, and they've said, this exact phrase that I just used has been said to me before. by a man who um, he was a neighbor of mine, and they lost their kid to leukemia. And it's like heart-wrenching. 
And I think for a lot of people, and the reason why a lot of you guys brought this up, is there's this idea that what if somebody asks a question that I can't answer? You know, I want to go preach the gospel, but I also don't want to be in a situation where somebody um, presents something to me that I'm not able to answer back to. It's like, I'm not a pastor. I'm not an apostle. I didn't get to walk around with Jesus and get taught by him. So who am I? Whatever, maybe you've only been saved for a short amount of time. You're like, who am I to be able to tell people about Jesus? Sometimes we feel like we hardly know anything about him ourselves. And there's probably a few of you guys in here, you feel like you might have a logical answer to that question, that you have stuff prepared, and um, that's really great if you do. But for most of us, we don't even know the answer to that question ourselves, let alone enough to be able to explain it to somebody else. Again, I'm going to explain to you guys how we overcome these things later. (laughs) So we're going to move on. So just... Hang on to that one, and let's keep going. The third reason, remember there's three reasons. The first one is fear of losing relationship. The second reason that we have hindrances from sharing the gospel is lack of biblical knowledge. And the third one is blind eyes. The third most common thing that hinders people from preaching the gospel and advancing the kingdom of God is simply not noticing the opportunities that God's given them. How many times in your life have you walked past a person, a soul, that was ready to be saved, that God has been preparing the soil, a friend, a family member? How many times have you walked past somebody who was broken and hurting and just kept walking? And you didn't even know. The honest truth, for all of us, probably a few times, probably more than a few times. Why is that? See, we find that often when we give our lives to Jesus, we secure our spot in heaven, right? It's like, okay, got it, got my ticket in. And then we focus on ourselves, Our life begins to become about, like, what's going on with me? I'm at the grocery store. I'm going to buy groceries. I'm not thinking about the fact that every single other person in this grocery store has a soul and is either going to one day be in heaven or hell. I'm just thinking, I want some bread. (laughs) Like, I just need to get some cereal. I really want some more Captain Crunch, which I do. So if anyone wants to buy me Captain Crunch, you're welcome to. It is my favorite cereal. So we're so focused on the things of us, and we're so blind to the things of God that often what he wants us to do or how he wants us to speak, we just completely miss it. We don't even see it. We don't hear the voice of God because we're not looking for it. We're going to talk more about the secrets of that later. (laughs) Actually, we're going to talk about those things right now. So um, those are the three things. You're welcome. Fear of losing relationship, lack of biblical knowledge, blind eyes. So now what I want to do is we're going to pick these apart, and we're going to talk about how do we work through these things. I think every other hindrance that you could come up with for your reasoning of why you might hesitate to share the gospel with somebody is rooted in one of these three. And by the end of tonight, this is my goal, is I want you to be encouraged And I want you to have a new faith and understanding of your role in sharing the truth of God and the gospel with the lost, the broken, and hurting. Here's the first one. Fear of losing relationship. The solution, intentional relationship with God. Look at what it says in John 14, 18. Well, actually starting on verse 15 says this. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, 
because as he is, so are we in this world. Now, this is the part that I really want you to focus on. Now there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. This is Jesus talking. What Jesus is saying in this is he's saying that Jesus, the Son of Man, sorry, this isn't Jesus talking, it's John talking about Jesus. He's saying that Jesus is the Son of Man, he is God, he is love, and when we abide in Jesus, when we abide in this love, we're abiding in him, and it's a perfect love. There's only one love in this world and in this life that is perfect, and that's the love of Jesus. It's the love of our Father. And it's in this perfect love that fear is cast out. So here's my question to you in this. If you are afraid, and if you feel like in life you have this fear of people, it means that you don't really understand the love of God in your life. I feel like this is a topic I talk about a lot, but it's so crucial. Listen, if your life is full of fear, It's because you don't know who your father is. Not really. Because if you knew who he was, if you knew what he did, really knew what he did and the love that he has for you, fear would rid itself from you. I'm confident in my God and in my father because I know how he loves for me and how he cares for me. And it's from that place, as it continues, says verse 19, because perfect love casts out fear, we love because he first loved us. You want to get better at preaching the gospel and evangelizing to people? It starts with a relationship with God and a love for him, and really understanding that. And from that place, that love will cause you to love others. If someone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. In this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. You know, I was talking to someone recently who uh, the Lord gave a dream to. If you've never heard God speak to you through a dream before, it's a pretty incredible thing. But this was the dream. In this dream, uh, she was standing in heaven before God, and it was judgment day. So the Lord was kind of showing her this picture. And she looked over to her left, and she saw a relative whom she had been praying for for years, somebody that she has felt uh, tugged from God to share the truth of the gospel with, somebody that she's felt like um, this kind of conviction. Some of you guys may have this with some people in your life. If you don't yet, someday you will. And she looked over at this relative, and this relative was in tears. And this relative looked over to her with tears streaming down her face, and with down his face, and said to her, why didn't you tell me? You know, the two of them are in this dream. They're standing before God on judgment day. They're in line. God's seated on his throne. Jesus is on his right hand. And in this moment, they realize, both of them, like we're here. God is here. And this woman who's walking with the Lord and has been a Christian for a while is thinking, like, oh, how exciting. Like, we get to enter into eternity And this man who is not walking with the Lord looks over and just says, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you say anything? Did you not care? How many people in your life have you rejected and neglected to tell about Jesus because you were uncomfortable? Because you were nervous? Let me tell you something. 
and let you in on a secret. I would rather endure a little bit of awkwardness in this life to stand before God on judgment day and have to give an account as he says, why didn't you tell this person? Why didn't you tell your brother, your sister, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle, that random person in the grocery store that you saw? Why didn't you tell him? When God was stirring your heart and we chose to walk away, And there's no good excuse. You're not going to look at God and say, oh, I'm just really introverted. It's not an excuse, guys. I've been an introvert my entire life. (laughs) And it's not an excuse to neglect the preaching of God's word. doesn't mean it's not hard. I get it. I really do. You're not going to look at God and say, I was in a rush. I had a lot of stuff to do. My life's really busy, God. Sorry I didn't tell so-and-so. I just forgot about it. It's not how this works. Who are you neglecting to tell about God and the truth of the gospel? You know, it is a deep love and relationship with Jesus that will lead you to share with others. As I've grown in my love for God, it's grown my desire and my love for the people around me, and it's grown my boldness, where I don't care as much as I did about what people might think. Because I know at the end of the day, people are just people. The Bible says, don't fear man who can kill your body. Don't fear people. All they're going to do is kill you. (laughs) That's the worst that they could do. But only fear God who can not only kill your body, but also your soul. That's the first one. The second one, and the second solution, lack of biblical knowledge. The solution is testimony. Revelations 12, 11 says, and they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. They did not love their life even when faced with death. 1 Peter 3, 15. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Now, initially in 1 Peter, it seems like Peter is saying you need to know all about the Bible so that no matter what question somebody asks you, you have the perfect answer. That's not what he's saying. He's saying be ready to give a defense on the account of the hope that is in you. This is your testimony. Listen, God doesn't need you to defend him. God doesn't need you to explain why he does things the way that he does them. He doesn't need you to explain his will and his plans and his purposes. But God has commanded and asked of us that we might give an account and a testimony of the things that he's done. You don't have to have all the right answers. When somebody approaches you with a difficult thing, you know, you don't have to try to explain to them what God was doing or why God let something happen. That's not your place. It is your job to love that person and show the love of God to that person and help explain them how God has manifested that love in your own life. The Bible says that the world will know that you are a servant of Christ by the way that you love other Christians and by the way that you love people, by the way that you serve them, the way that you bless them, not by how much you know about the Bible. I know some non-believers who are not walking with the Lord that know more about the Bible than myself and a lot of the people in this room. Satan knows a lot about the Bible. It's not knowledge that will save you. That's not to say that the Bible is not important and you shouldn't study it and you shouldn't read it because you should and you should want to understand. But it's that relationship that comes first 
And it's that testimony that God is going to build up in your life that is going to have the greatest impact in your ability to reach people and reach the lost. Last one. I'm going to have the band come up now so you guys can get set up. Lack of biblical knowledge, solution, testimony. And the last one is this. Blind eyes, what's the solution? Daily walk with God. What is this? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Jesus said, pray in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we, are, as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom of glory, power and glory forever. Amen. What you'll notice in this, Jesus is saying, give us today our daily bread. Now, there's a lot in this, and uh, we're not going to really go into it. But the Bible is very clear that this relationship that you have with the Lord, this walk with God, is a regular daily thing. This is not a one-time decision. This is not a a once-a-month thing. This is not a when-you're-at-church thing. When you are at home with your family, you need to be in prayer in relationship with Jesus. Because you don't know... Unless you're spending time with him, unless you are close to the Lord, it's in those moments. Man, I remember one time being at home with my mom, (laughs) and I was just worshiping and praying that day, and I was like really, really intentional with seeking the Lord. And uh, super random, but I uh, approached my mom because I felt like the Lord wanted me to and was asked her if she was having leg pain, and she was, like a lot of leg pain. And then I found out something about my mother I never knew in my entire life, which is that her legs were two different lengths. This was like maybe four or five years ago. So like my entire life growing up, this is like something that I did not know that my mother had. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh. And it was something that the Lord showed me, and I was able to pray with her. And uh, from that day, that pain has never been there. Like the Lord blessed my mother and took away that pain, and I'm so grateful for it. But I often think, like, what if I just didn't care? Sometimes that's the hardest person to talk to. We have an easier time praying for our friends than we do our mom, dad, brother, sister. Because it feels weird. It's like your mom and your dad, they raised you. They cared for you to sort of be able to approach them and say, like, I want to pray for you. I want to bless you. The impact that that will have on your life is huge. But you're going to miss it if you're not intentional about putting your focus on God. Because we get so caught up in this physical part of our life that we miss out on everything that God's doing. When you're at school, sports, Grocery shopping, I know I mentioned grocery shopping a lot, but I've had some of the most powerful, meaningful conversations and testimonies of preaching the gospel to people when I was buying groceries. And that's all I was there to do. (laughs) But I've learned something over the years, and my attitude has shifted a lot. When I go grocery shopping, I'm not just buying groceries anymore. I'm not. It's a time for me to pray and really seek the Lord, and it's in those moments that the Lord is going to use you.